Hey there, this is Needed Conversations with Ryan and Victoria Cole. Welcome back. We're hoping that you've been tuning in these past few weeks as we were talking about expectations versus reality in our relationships. We covered everything from being singles to uh, marriage. And so we are in the marriage section and we wanted to kind of wrap it up by giving those of you who are married and have struggled with putting false expectations on your spouse, some pointers on how to resolve that issue. Because sometimes when it's not addressed, we tend to kind of put it under the rug and it can ball into other things. Yeah, and really, um, it has to do with how to manage conflict. Conflict is inevitable in any kind of relationships, in any kind of relationship, but in particular with marriage, it's one that you can't avoid. You know, you're living with that person, you wake up next to them, every single day it's staring you right in the face. So how do you deal with it? What are some skills that you can take away and apply to your relationship to see some resolution and some forward momentum so that you get on the same page? I oftentimes say that um, marriage with a mission is destined for greatness. It's, Mm -hmm. It's one that will yield the glory of God. And if you're going to be mission focused, it's like traveling on a road. There are going to be road bumps and uh, those road bumps can either completely derail you or they can propel you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that conflict is good. The added tension gives that relationship some spice and some flavor. No one likes a boring relationship. That's for sure. Uh, So you need that tension and that conflict. And you don't want to marry someone who has your same perspective. Then you're not uh, going to grow as quickly as you would. You don't want a yes person. What what good of a relationship is that? So having someone to offer that contrasting opinion and give you that perspective that you may be blindsided by you you don't you don't see it because it's in your 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 blind spot and and you need someone to speak up and say you know this is the way that i see it and then find that middle ground so that you can move forward together yeah i agree and you know what the it, that's a good point that he brought in that you don't want a person with the same personality as you and as we heard the saying in the world opposites attract and it's so true scientifically you know even with the magnets if you try to put one of the same side of the magnet what it does it actually repels and the opposites actually attract to each other and they stick together so that's a very interesting concept um and i think the beautiful thing about marriage is that because you guys are different and bring something different to the table i think that you uh, see in a dif- through a different lens therefore i feel like that there's different angles that it's like when you're in a fight or a warfare of some kind that your spouse has your back because they see something maybe differently than you do um so we wanted to take you guys through some pointers if you have uh placed an an unmet expect or have an unmet expectation in your marriage uh how are some of the ways that you can resolve it so number one is num- uh, you want to make sure that you identify that expectation because if you don't actually verbally say and like we've said in the previous episodes you don't want to say leave it for mind reading or for that person to figure it out because then they're going to be frustrated so make sure that you identify the expectation because sometimes we actually need to sit back personally and say well, what am I expecting out of that person? Maybe it's ridiculous, you know, maybe it's something that we should not expect of that person or something that this person can't fulfill. And if it is something that you're expecting from that person, you need to make sure that you communicate that. Yeah, and are those expectations something that they agreed to? Yeah. Uh, um, Maybe it is something that they planted this idea in your mind and so you expected them to be a certain way or to do certain things um, and maybe they need reminded of those uh, expectations but also we place a lot of expectations on our spouses that they never agree to not in the dating process not in the first years of marriage and so really identifying what are my expectations in any given situation are those expectations realistic are those expectations biblical and do they agree to it because every relationship has invisible contracts. It's not like, you know, you have it written up and you sign on a dotted line, but it's something that has to be discussed and it's it's something that has to be worked through. So identify your expectations. Number two, um, try to see their perspective as well. Validate your spouse's perspective and acknowledge 
um, that it's not, not necessarily better or worse than yours. It's just different and different is okay. And whether or not you agree with their position, you have to respect their position. Um, you may not even come to a an agreement as to the fine details. You will have your perspective and they'll have theirs. But at the end, what you're really trying to get at is consensus. How do we move forward? What are we agreeing to? Because I can work. Uh, how can two walk together? That's what the Bible says, mm -hmm. except they agree. So let's agree on a few things and let's begin to move forward. Yeah, so number three, be willing to compromise. I mean, this is a collaborative effort, so you want to make sure that um, you know you are respectful of that person's perspective, but you're also willing to give something up. I mean, you know, sometimes you give, sometimes you take in a marriage, especially. It's not going to be always your way, and if it is always your way, then you you can see that marriage suffer because you know that person is very the other person is very unhappy, or they feel like they're being unheard, and I think eventually that can cause other places of tension um, or disconnection, you know, even, you know, in your intimate uh, life, because they're going to feel like you're not respecting their perception. So always make sure, I think all of us want to be heard. So make sure that you are uh, listening to what their needs are and work together to compromise. Yeah, for sure. Philippians 2, 3 to 4 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And this uh, materializes in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's short-term things that you're struggling with, whether it be household responsibilities or duties, or whether it's um, a larger life decision. And you have to lay out, what are my goals? Um, what is the vision that we have together and how can those goals align and let's create a time frame um, let's say uh, one of your goal one of you have has a goal to uh, start a business or step into a new field of career and you need additional training well you might have to compromise and and hold down the fort in terms of the financial responsibility and it and, and enable them to go to school that means you might have a season whether about that be from six months to a few years where you are taking on a lot more of the household responsibilities because you're allowing them to get an education within a field that is going to bless you guys financially. Mm -hmm. And then the compromise is at the end of this, you know, you will recognize that this isn't my lifelong responsibility, but this is an, uh, you know, a seasonal expectation that once you get your degree and you're able to step into that field, that I'm going to be able to pursue whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that you're going to start bearing some more of the responsibility, whether that be financially or with the household duties. So you're going to compromise and you want to make sure that you're both accomplishing the goals that you have. And it may not be that extreme. It may just be meeting in the middle and really setting your, your weekly and your monthly agenda. I think that's one of the things that we even still struggle with a lot is finding that consistency and that rhythm within our schedule, especially in our line of work. You know, there's a lot of spontaneous things. When I'm ministering, uh, you know, there could be an opportunity that takes us out of town. There could be, you know, a, an assignment that we have here or there to do production or filming or, you know, whatever we're doing. And so that might not look like a consistent weekly schedule, mm -hmm. but we've got to communicate and say, what's on the agenda this week? What are the ebbs and flow? I know that I'm going to need help in, at the house here. I'm going to know, know that I'm, I need you to take the kids this, this day and I'm going to take the kids that day, or we both have something. So we need to make other arrangements for the children and, and talking that through so that you can find some type of compromise. So as we uh, are talking about compromise, you want to make sure that you determine what your deal breakers are and, um, you know, communicate that um, because sometimes, you know, we can kind of agree to certain things and then when we're in it and it's a lot harder to get it, uh, get out of it. I think when you're married, let's say if a spouse is going back to school and you say, okay, I guess I can agree to that, but then, you know, you're struggling day to day. And that's not to say that it's not going to be challenging, but maybe that's something that you need to talk to your spouse and say, this is so probably something I can't do because of my personality or something that I've been struggling with day to day. Yep. I think that deal breakers is something that 
you know, we need to address uh, as single individuals, maybe if you're dating somebody, some of the things that it's like, no, this is a no for me. Absolutely no. Um, because I think once you're in a marriage, it's a little bit different. I think it's more about compromise than a deal breaker situation. Yeah. And deal breakers in marriage may look like non-negotiables that you both go into a situation and let's say you're, you know, you work, you are working your spouse through school, you know, but the non-negotiables of the relationship is we still need a date night. We still need time. You know, if you're the one taking care of the kids while they're going to school, you still need time to yourself. What does that look like? How often will that occur? And be able to say, this is a non-negotiable. Our spiritual life is a non-negotiable. Us taking our kids to church, non-negotiable. And so lay those out um, as you're stepping into these situations where you may be compromising in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But number five is collaboration. And this is important. Uh, you want to collaborate to determine how we want to handle any family issues from now on. And you're going to decide to approach it as teammates, not as adversaries. And you're going to fight your battles not against one another, but on the same team. You, you are on the same team. So it's you fighting the issues together. And whatever decision you make, even if you weren't the one who came up with the decision to move forward, or if you didn't get your full way, right? When a decision is made, it's made on behalf of both of you. You are one now. The Bible says that you are one flesh. And so that means when you've made a decision or he's made a decision, vice versa, you've made a decision for the both of you. And that's why it's important to consult your spouse. Because even when you're away from them and you have to make a decision, if you ignore their input, you, you are going to have to face that. They are going to have to live with whatever decision that you made. And so it's important to, to collaborate. It's important to talk these things through. Um, and it's important to own that decision collectively. Mm -hmm. If you are not in, you know, if you are the type of person who kind of begrudges not getting your way, you're going to have to swallow the pill. And even if the decision turns out like it didn't work out, you cannot turn to your spouse and say, I told you so, or that's on you. If you would have just listened to me, blah, 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 blah. I told you that wasn't going to work, but some, you made the decision together. So it's not a, I told you so it's a, we have to pick up the pieces and learn from our mistakes. And you pointing fingers at your spouse is only going to exacerbate the situation. It's going to anger them. It's going to push them away. It's going to drive a wedge between your relationship. So whatever decision you make, own it together, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I love that, that it says we and our family. And I think even using that terminology um, as you're speaking and referring actually will help you to register that this is not for I in my situation or whatever it is that you're dealing with. So you want to make sure that it's like when you represent a company, you come and you sell something, you say, well, we carry this and this and this. So this is how you come forward too with your family and how you collaborate together is that you say, we're going to do this. And then you want to make sure that you identify a solution where it's a win-win situation for both of you. And again, it's something that you both have to agree with, because again, if one person makes that decision and now you're moving forward with it, somebody's going to be very bitter about it. And there's going to be a lot of other issues, unnecessary issues that are going to arise and disputes and frustration and anxiety. So it's better to, you know, sit down and decide what we're going to do in the season how you know this is going to function so that you both feel like you're kind of winning and of course there's compromise in a way but um you know set that up so that you both feel like you're being heard yeah and listen out um for the needs of your spouse you know a win-win there is always an opportunity for a win-win situation you know if one of you is winning the other one's probably losing and that means you're both losing so you want to you want to take turns compromising or you want to you know Listen for the needs of your spouse and make sure that you are not taking advantage of their, you know, their kindness or, you know, their willingness to bend a little bit. You want to be flexible as well. Marriage takes a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, you know, once you've decided what you're going to do in a given situation, 
you want to make sure to come back after a specific amount of time and evaluate that solution and discuss how it's going for both of you and make adjustments as necessary. If you are six months into an agreement, a lifestyle change, and it's just not working for you, it has taken you and, and it's a tailspin for you, you are going to have to come to a different resolution. And you want to make sure that, uh, you know, if you, if you, if your spouse is taking on a heavier load in this season for whatever reason, that you're mindful of that, that you uh, are paying attention to their emotional cues, to their social cues, so that, you know, you're not overloading them beyond that which they could bear. It may be that they could only handle it for six months and you have to handle, you have to put together a different um, expectation or set of um, resolutions where you may not be going to school full time, maybe you have to go half time for a semester and give them a break and then go back to full time and try to manage it like that. And I know I'm just using that one example, but that can really be with any aspect of your relationship. How do you handle the little disagreements as well? Uh, anything from who's taking out the trash, who's doing the dishes when. I know Victoria and I have to, you know, come to terms with intense season of work for me in particular to know that I have this large event it's going to take you know the next month and I'm going to have to put my full focus into it that means that I'm probably not going to be able to contribute as much with the dishes mm -hmm. as I used to but that can't go on and become a lifestyle at the end of that month when that event is over I better get my tail in front of the sink and start doing my part you better <laughs> <laughs> or you know mopping the floor or this and that and the same thing with her if she's got something going on a project like this Saturday she went and did a project at her mom's house and I took care of the kids I knew that's something she wanted to do and it's what she loves to do and so uh, you know I, I'm taking care of the kids while she's doing that and men you're not you, you never should tell your wife that you're babysitting the kids it's FYI. your own children so you don't babysit your own children. Say, I'll take the kids. I'll take care of it, honey. Because if you say you're babysitting, that's kind of saying, these are your kids and not mine. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, um, this is kind of how to manage some of the expectations in your relationship. Again, this shifts from season to season. And you want to readdress this as new things are introduced. If you have a baby... That changes everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to renegotiate the way things are handled. Men, you're going to have to pick up some slack for at least three to six months in, in a heavy way because um, there, that's a biological thing. There's certain things that you cannot do. I know I saw a picture of somebody uh, feeding a guy feeding the baby with the bottle, and he had uh, the cutout of his wife on the side of his face. Um and the baby was like bought into it. And sometimes those little things can work for sure. But, you know, there's nothing like that mama time in the beginning stages of a baby being born. But you can help by taking up the slack around the house and making sure that she's got food and, and all of that. These are just little examples. But and this it's is... not a womanly thing. I know like some men think, oh, that's a woman's job. You know, I think a woman would definitely appreciate a man stepping up and doing those things. It doesn't make you a wimp. It actually makes you very strong and makes you very supportive husbands. So go out there. And if you want to conquer the world, start it in the kitchen and start it on the, you know, mopping the floor. And then I'm sure that your wife will treat you kindly, if you know what I mean. But um, we're just speaking from our vantage point. Yeah. Uh, we actually have people in our family who are the, the roles are opposite, mm -hmm. um, where the wife do, uh, does working primarily and the dad stays at home and he absolutely loves it. And I respect it. And I think it's a really cool thing. You know, he wants to take that time and pour into his kids and their babies and toddlers, too. So. Um, whatever works, however you feel called. If, if you're a woman out there and you um, feel that in you, go for it. But make sure your spouse is in agreement. And if you're single, I hope you're taking notes because this is some really good stuff for you to determine when you're dating so that you don't run into mm -hmm. con uh, conflicts in your marriage where you're going to end up having to compromise in a way that you would have never thought you would have had to compromise but in order to make that marriage work, which you're going to have to, 
you will have to make those compromises. So take your time, single people. Deal with the deal breakers so that you don't have to have some major uh, conflicts and major Deal with issues. the deal breakers when you're single so the deal yeah. doesn't break when you're married. That's good. Um, and you know, it's funny how you said that uh, uh, when a baby comes along, uh, everything changes. Next episode, we're going to talk about expectations versus reality, the parenting edition, and that will wrap up this kind of segment that we've been doing expectation versus reality which I'm excited about because there's a lot that comes with it as well but we hope you guys enjoyed these expectation versus reality little episodes and let us know how um, what else you guys want us to talk about in regards to either this topic or relationally would like to address it give us a review that will help us a bunch if you know that somebody's dealing with issues in their marriage please share send it to them share it on your social media you just never know what this is with what this can do for somebody just hearing somebody else relate to what they're going through so be sure to do that uh, we would love to hear from you guys make sure you're subscribed and um, if you're listening right now and you're not driving if you're um, listening to a podcast you can go back and get this information in fact it's going to be in the description below why don't you text us we are going to give you our phone number so you can text us and we do text back and what we text back with is marriage strategies, um, strategies to help you discover your purpose, and spiritual growth and development. We're going to encourage you in your walk with the Lord, in your marriage or your dating journey, and also in discovering your purpose. Uh, put this number in your phone, 864-428-7131. 864-428-7131. Just text us. Hi, this is so-and-so. I'll send you my contact um, information there so you can just text away and both Victoria and I will be able to answer some of those questions, maybe even right here on our podcast. But either way, you will get a reply from us. We'll text you with some resources again on YouTube. Love you guys. Make sure you subscribe. And until next time, this has been Needed Conversations.